Hey guys, today we have a special episode and I would like to first big up to Mr. Alaric and Mr. O'Neill that I believe is starting an amazing initiative in St. Elizabeth. This initiative seeks to organize individual farmers in St. Elizabeth into a cluster group. They call this group the St. Elizabeth Goat Farmers Cluster Association Limited. Please follow their Facebook page and support. Forming cluster groups and aligning yourself with the Small Ruminant Association of Jamaica can only increase the lobbying number and power to benefit small farmers. From my recent tours in St. Elizabeth, it has shown how unique the agricultural culture is in the Breadbasket Parish. One such unique feature observed was communal farming, where two or more farmers would come together and they would raise their sheep and goat together as one. This allowed for a diverse set of faces, persons from different career fields, and also have different age groups coming under an umbrella to raise small ruminants for their livelihood. This level of organization and trust between farmers can reap benefit once key stakeholders partner with these farmers to drive them to a level of success. Another unique feature observed was a sustainable agricultural practices being adopted by St. Elizabeth farmers. We speak of sustainability, we speak of long term. Long term, for example, regarding housing. Housing being constructed out of metal with full support for hurricanes and for earthquakes. This plate is also sustainable land management and the use of local resources. The farmers have adopted, I would consider, a civil pastoral system where they utilize both trees, grasses within their livestock enterprise. St. Elizabeth is also renowned for their crop based agricultural systems which now is being incorporated into their livestock. For example, they would plant corn, they would pick their corn cobs, and would shred the corn trash into making goat feed. These farmers also believe in adopting new technology to their system, while nowhere seen they're doing plastic bag silage on their farms. Our young farmer, Mr. Lazarus, our teenage goat farmer, has seen the importance of adding a security feature to his farm to protect his investment. Even the plan to his proven housing, following one of our close clients, Mr. Henry. For whose style you go follow? Henry's farm. Where you know Henry from? Instagram, my seed farm. Hi. Say it one more time. Hi, bro. Hi, bro. And myself is committed to driving the St. Elizabeth farmers to our next level. Um, we plan to meet with all these organizations, cluster groups, and farmers to see how best we can grow strong together to so carry goat rearing and sheep rearing into a more a commercial enterprise. So after a long day in the field, now we get really hungry and it's just time to look some food. So we're traveling through Junction Centers Bed, right where they have the, the cow skin soup. And we met with Mrs. Salesman, who gave us a lovely plate of rice and peas and chicken myself, Mr. Bernard and his wife. And while talking, we discussed, you know, goat rearing, because we're always talking about goats. And to our surprise, Miss Salesman herself is a goat farmer. Let's follow Miss Salesman on our tour. Meet Miss Salesman, restaurant entrepreneur and livestock farmer. Miss Salesman led us on a tour of her farm to oh, JJ, a nice man. A lovely goat stock. Miss Salesman eat me each animal, um, JJ, JJ. Mocha, all contribute to our business operation. This is nice. This is a this is a really nice native animal and oh this is nice. JJ JJ is considered a Jamaican Creole or native goat, which are goats that were introduced from the 16th century that has evolved due to natural selection and we consider them a local ecotype. 
further understand the characterization of the native goat, please check a paper written by Mr. David Miller and the late Derek Vermont that speaks to phenotypically address these native animals. So, Miss Salesman, what, what is the, the cost you hit it for goat meat here down in Central Israel? Well, live, it's $500 per pound, but the clean meat is $1,100. So if I'm supposed to come to your restaurant and get a plate of, you know, chevron, what would be the cost for that? Like you get a couple fingers of green banana, a plate of curry goat, maybe a slice of yellow yam, some steamed vegetable, you'll have to give me $1,500. Okay, and you just, are you, these are the animals that you grow for yourself? Yes. So you're making the maximum profit? That's what I think. <laughs> you know, the middleman I deal with from start to finish, the end product. From start to finish is my thing, so... Amazing. Yes. The famous mulberry. You know that this is goat season. Yep. High protein. High protein. This is one of the best. You, you, you Very know, digestible. You must plant up a whole for this time. Yes, and yes, feed them it. Just cut the lemon out. Don't you just cut it and say. Morris Alaba, aka mulberry, is known in Jamaica for its fruits. That's very sweet, makes good wine. And also the leaf, which is a very high crude protein source, averaging between 15 to 20 percent crude protein. And it's also a very digestible crop. I believe this is one of those power forages that we have in Jamaica that is very underutilized. You could plant it in with your grasses in combination. Um, you could plant it in your fence line also to act as shade. This initiative is not new as we planted mulberry in fodder banks across the island on the civil pastoral project with the Jamaica Dairy Development Board, ECA and MICAF. I believe one of the greatest news for Central Zed farmers is that the government has already invested heavily in providing resources in the St. Elizabeth Parish. For example, the Hunslow Demonstration Training Center, which is specific for small ruminants. They have a reproductive lab also that offers AI and embryo transfer and is very underutilized. I believe the St. Elizabeth Cluster Group and also this new trend of goat farmers could put back this Hunslow DTC on the map as a training center for the region.